the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. It may not look like the morning, but I must really invest in a new camera. But it is morning, and uh, it's just the light isn't great here at St. Bernadette's, as you can see. I thought we'd celebrate Mass here this morning as we gather together on this third Sunday of Easter. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed faith, youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed the crowd in a loud voice. Men of Israel, listen to what I am going to say. Jesus the Nazarene was a man condemned to you by God, by the miracles and portents commended to you, not condemned, that would be wrong, commended to you by God, by the miracles and portents and signs that God worked through him when he was among you, as you all know. This man, who was put into your power by the deliberate intention and foreknowledge of God, you took and had crucified by men outside the law. You killed him, but God raised him to life, freeing him from the pangs of Hades, for it was impossible for him to be held in its power, since, as David says of him, I saw the Lord before me always. For with him in my right hand, nothing can shake me. So my heart was glad, and my tongue cried out with joy. My body too will rest in the hope that you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor allow your Holy One to experience corruption. You have made known the way of life to me. You will fill me with gladness through your presence. Brothers, no one can deny that the patriarch David himself is dead and buried. His tomb is still with us. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn him an oath to make him one of his descendants, 
succeed him on the throne. What he foresaw and spoke about was the resurrection of Christ. He is the one who was not abandoned to Hades and whose body did not experience corruption. God raised this man, Jesus, to life, and all of us who are witnesses to that, now raised to the heights by God's right hand, he has received from the Father the Holy Spirit, who was promised, and what you see and hear is the outpouring of that Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Show us, Lord, the path of life. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. O Lord, it is you, you are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved know decay. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. If you are acknowledging as your father, one who has no favorites and judges everyone according to what he has done, you must be scrupulously careful as long as you are living away from your home. Remember the ransom that was paid to free you from the useless way of life your ancestors handed down, was not paid in anything corruptible, neither in silver nor gold, but in the precious blood of the Lamb, without spot or stain, namely Christ, who, though known since before the world was made, has been revealed only in our time, the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you now have faith in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory for that very reason, so that you would have faith and hope in God. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Two of the disciples of Jesus were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognising him. He said to them, what matters are you discussing as you, are, as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them, called Cleopas, answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things? he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet, and the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people and how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. 
Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels, who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is early evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now, as he was with them at the table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them, and their eyes were opened and they recognised him. But he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their com companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognised him in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. People often ask me, as I've said before, what's your favourite piece of scripture? And I have many, but this gospel today must come up there amongst the top five. It is a beautiful and powerful story of two disciples walking dejectedly away from Jerusalem, their hearts full of sorrow, their hearts full of regret, their hearts full of dashed hopes. And yet into their midst, Jesus comes, but they fail to recognise him. It's quite a common thing in the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus, that people seem to lack knowledge and understanding of who he is. It seems that the experience of the resurrection has transformed him in so many ways. And it is only through his telling of them of the scriptures and he's explaining to them that his suffering and his death was to bring about the glory of the resurrection and at the breaking of the bread that they recognised who he was. And instead of continuing to walk away from Jerusalem, they rushed back to tell the disciples that they had seen the Lord. And what they find out when they return is that they have missed the resurrection appearance of it resurrection appearances of Jerusalem, of Jesus in Jerusalem. In their despair, they had turned away. I think maybe it says something about our faith sometimes. That sometimes we lack faith. Sometimes we despair. Sometimes we walk away from the glory of God. And that's when our hearts become sad. And that's when our hearts become dejected. It's only when we recognise the Lord in those moments of his coming to us, in moments of prayer, in times of need, and in times of great joy, that we truly see the risen Lord. So let us, like those two disciples, turn back towards Jerusalem so that we can meet the Lord 
and open our hearts and our minds to his love. So let us profess our faith. I believe in the one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Just remember that I've left the bidding prayers in Trowbridge. I'll just go and get them. Only joking. Let us turn to the Lord with our prayers and petitions this day. I have forgotten, by the way, so these are from my heart. We pray for the Church, for Francis our Pope, Declan our Bishop, for all communities of faith during these times, that they may never despair and lose hope, and always may their minds and hearts be turned towards the heavenly Jerusalem. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our world in these troubled days. Let us pray especially for that, those parts of our world still troubled by war, by conflict and poverty, which only make these times worse. We pray that people of goodwill, that their voices may be heard. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for ourselves in our journeys of faith. We pray that we may always show in our lives what we believe in our hearts, the goodness and truth of God. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are sick, those in our parishes at this time, those who feel alone and isolated, that somehow they may feel the presence of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who have died and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. We pray that families who grieve and mourn may have the hope of the resurrection and the life. Let us ask for the prayers of Mary, Queen of Heaven, as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pause for a moment with those prayers deep within our hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, 
You never abandon your church, but you are always with it. And whenever we gather to proclaim your, your love, you are with us always, for you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. It's handy to have a chalice to put the wine in. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpet perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Declan, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, Francis Salmon, for whom we offer this Mass, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Bernadette, Saint John, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let's just pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a good day everyone, keep safe and keep well. I'm sure some of you are thinking, is the dog with me? Yes he is, but he's been very well behaved, he's just been sat down there um, through most of Mass um, and he's been a very good attentive Catholic dog this morning and hasn't been running around. Um, also um, just to... together again but we know that we're together in spirit and in our hearts. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.